your family, and suddenly your home is invaded by four armed males. And unfortunately, that incident occurred on November 22nd, 2016, at approximately 8.30 p.m. the Tuesday before Thanksgiving. The homeowners were home, enjoying a quiet night with family. The father's reading to his children in bed. The two ladies that were in the house were taking care of some groceries when there's a knock on the door. And the suspect, the first one, comes to the front door impersonating a UPS delivery person and asks that his package requires a signature. The lady of the house advises her husband, who answers the door, and as soon as he does so, when the front door is open, suspect number one, again impersonating a UPS uh, delivery person, sticks a pistol in the man's face and begins a struggle to enter the house. That struggle, I'm sure to the complainant, would seem like forever, but it lasts a good 9, 11 seconds. That time is enough for the other three suspects who are in a position of concealment to rush the front door. The male complainant fights them off, holds on as long as he can, and fortunately gives his family time to, to hide. The ladies in the house are able to call the police, but in the meantime, the four suspects overpower the complainant. They use a tasing device to subdue him and continually beat him throughout this process in the time they're in the house. They uh, take him to an uh, area in the house. They demand him to open a, a safe at the location. And during that time, all, all should begin to uh, respond. The suspects, we assume, hear the resp uh, responding sirens and leave the house. In the process of them doing so, they, they take various items inside the location, some jewelry, some antique weapons as well. The male complainant suffered se severe injuries, had to be hospitalized. But I think as any true Texan will attest that he would gladly you know, su suffer those injuries to defend his family. Fortunately, the children and the ladies in the house were not injured. But again, the male complainant did go to the hospital and suffered some serious injuries, which fortunately he has survived. We are here today seeking the public's help in identifying these violent suspects. Suspect number one is described as a black male approximately 20 to 25 years of age, 5'6 to 5'8. At the time, he was wearing a brown hat, which uh, resembles a UPS hat. He was wearing a UPS jacket. I also want to take this time to note that the, U the UPS is cooperating with this investigation and to note that the jacket style that the suspect was wearing is something that they only provide to their full-time employees. But so if someone's wearing that and comes to your door, that should be your regular driver that you should know. During the season, when they hire seasonal workers, <coughs> we'll be providing you a picture of the temporary jacket they assigned, and those are given back to the, to the company at the end of every shift. So if you see someone that's UPS that's wearing that jacket, it's not your regular driver, you know, use proper caution as, as you see fit at that time. Um, the seasonal workers have a, a brown, simple vest, like a traffic directing vest, and again, they return those to the employees at the end of every shift. Suspect number two, is also a black male, approximately 20, 25 years of age, of a medium build, wearing a gray hoodie. Uh, he's armed also with a handgun. Suspect number three is another black male, slightly taller, possibly 5'8 five, to 5'10 five, to five, in height, slim build. He was wearing a dark blue shirt. In one of the pictures you'll see, it looks kind of white. That's because that's going to be a, an infrared camera. At, it was at nighttime, so the color contrast has changed, but it is a dark blue a hoodie type shirt that he's wearing. He was masked up as well, and we do not get a clear look of his face, but you can't see his eyes. He's also armed. Suspect number three comes in wearing a fully closed dark black hood, uh, dark blue hoodie, jeans. Also take note of his shoes, and suspect number two, uh, shoes that has colored laces also. Suspect number four comes in while the first three are assaulting the, the male complainant. He walks in calmly and coolly and collectively. Even as his cohorts are assaulting. You can see them pistol whipping the fight at the front door. Suspect number four walks in like he does this every day. This is the kind of the people that we're looking for the, for the public system for and looking for. We need your help in trying to find these people. We're working every angle. Local agencies, including the Texas Rangers, are, are, here, are assisting us in this investigation, and we're hoping with this video the public can aid us in, in taking these people off the street. At this time, if there are any questions, we can leave them. No, this is Yes. What can people do? If, you know, I wouldn't think twice, even if it wasn't my regular driver answering the door to someone in uniform, and maybe that is naive, but what can people do when they see this? 
again, that's why I want to make clear that UPS is cooperating with us, and the jackets that that person wearing is normally signed just to the regular driver. So you see someone wearing that style of jacket, it's not a driver that you recognize, please use proper caution. There is nothing wrong if you tell them, I'll pick it up later, um, leave it at the front door, and if they don't want to follow your instructions, you know, follow your instincts. You know, me, me personally, especially if my wife's home alone and there's someone at the door and, you know, she's going to tell me leave the package or I'll go pick it up later. They can leave a little slip on. Right, so that would be your tip, even if it, you know, because like I said with the driver thing, I don't know that I would notice a jacket situation. Mm -hmm. You can always tell them to leave it at the door and come back. Do you have any other tips that you would suggest? Again, know and know who your people are in your neighborhood. If you, know, you should get to know your regular driver. You should get to know who delivers in your neighborhood. When FedEx, when UPS, when those kind of uh, companies deliver, they normally have the same person to sit in on the same route. Yes, people call in sick and things are happening. And again, like I said, like we began this uh, conference, fortunately, this is a relatively rare occurrence, but when it happens, I mean, it, it, it's, it's a nightmare scenario. Mm -hmm. You know, this man had to fight for his life and fight for his family, and that's why we need your help in trying to locate these suspects. Was the man suspicious about opening the door first and then when Uh, ag again, um, like, like sh uh, the per previous person was saying, like any homeowner, they saw UPS, it's not uncommon for them to get packages, and when they opened the front door, he was alert enough. Again, uh, he had his wits about him. When the man put the gun to his face, he started fighting back immediately for defense of his family. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately for him, there were three other suspects, and he was overpowering them. But again, he was able to hold them off long to protect his family. In the release, it said that the guy did say you have to sign for it, though, is that correct? Yeah, they had, yeah he, would, he just dropped the package. When the lady of the house asked for, uh, the, can you just do your signature? The only thing he said was yes, and that's where things progressed from there. Have you seen anything like this before? Like I said, for, uh, unfortunately, uh, this has happened. You know, incidents of home invasions have happened before, but again, they are a relatively rare occurrence. I mean, this is a true home invasion. I, I do not have at this time any connections between the suspects and the complainants. Um, you know, it's a holiday season, and unfortunately, people get targeted in those kind of time of year. They said they, they did try to get entry into a safe at the location. Okay. And they ended up leaving the jewelry and the antique firearms? That's correct. Okay. And this is gallery area? That's correct. Okay. As a police department, how frustrating is it to know that these thieves are going through extreme measures to sort of, um, you know, fake out these families and actually make them their victims? And it's obviously it's really frustrating, but we balance that out with the, the fact that, like I said, it's a relatively rare, rare occurrence. And this is why we're coming out here right now. This is where we're seeking the people's help. The Houston Police Department cannot police a city, a, a city that does not have law-abiding citizens. Most of the people in Houston are good. You know, we work for the public, and now we're asking for the public's help in this matter. Now, you know, bad guys are going to do bad things. You know, that's, that's a fact of life. But because we are a city, because we are a community, you know, we do survive and go through every day. And a lot of these cases, yes, we have a great forensic lab, we have a lot of great investigators, we have multiple agencies helping on the situation. When it comes down to it, when it comes down to brass tacks, it's the people out there that we work for to help us out every day. So we're hoping that this video will assist us in that. And that's what gives us hope and thus will deliver our frustrations. This seems, uh, I mean, I don't know, but this seems choreographed like they knew what they were doing. Do you think if they are not caught, this will happen again? No, of course, that's, that's the biggest fear. I mean, we want, at this time, I do not, I'm unaware of any other directly related cases. We are looking at all possibilities, any other instances where similar uh, MOs have been used and suspect descriptions. Of course, we're doing our crime analysis. Um, I mean, this is being led by the robbery division, but we've gotten assistance from different divisions within the Houston Police Department, again, other agencies. Crime Stoppers is here helping us out, putting this information out. They'll be offering a reward uh, for any information that leads to an arrest. So again, we're all working together on this, but um, right now, the most my important focus right now is looking for the public's help and trying to identify these suspects. And I just want to be clear about the jacket. So UPS is telling you that if somebody's delivering a holiday package, mm -hmm. they will not be in the No, time their full-time employees are the are those jackets are issued to their full-time full -time employees. employees. So normally speaking, again, we're still trying to ascertain how the suspect uh, gained access to that jacket. Again, and again, UPS is fully cooperative in this investigation. Their full-time employees are the ones who are normally issued those jackets. So what I'm saying to the public, if you see someone that's wearing that jacket and he's not your normal driver, that should be some, something to be concerned or just thought about. If you don't recognize the person and they're wearing that jacket, 
You know, ask them what, what, if they know your regular driver's name. You know, if leave the package behind. Whatever makes you feel comfortable. It's your home. You have the right to accept the package or not. Just because UPS knocks on the door doesn't mean you have you have to open it. If you feel uncomfortable, trust your instincts. But I uh, really appreciate uh, UPS sitting down speaking with me, and they were explaining that if they're wearing that style of jacket, that's normally issued to their usual drivers. So if you see your delivery person, that's not the person you see at every package, and they're wearing that style of jacket, then ask a few extra questions. You I'm are sorry, your. I'm sorry, that style of jacket, long sleeves. You mean what? I know it's kind of hard to see because there's only one angle. Mm -hmm. Is there anything more specific you can say about that jacket that we don't see in this video? Well, also the the full brown uniform. Right, because their temporary workers are not issued the full brown shirt, are not issued the full brown so shorts. Right. Now, they, they have holiday workers that just wear these, they look like traffic uh, direction vests. They'll put those on, they'll wear regular clothes. And from what they're advising me, those people are helpers for the driver. They will not normally come out and deliver the package. It's possible if the driver is doing something, so that's why I'm bringing it to your attention. But more often than not, those temporary workers are staying in the truck and just assisting the driver moving packages around, lifting things, or if it's a large shipment, he'll bring it over. Something I was talking to my reporter about earlier is also mm -hmm. the presence of a big brown truck if it's UPS. Mm -hmm. If I don't see that truck out there, I'm suspicious. They would normally park in the house or, or in front of the house, rather. Do you know if there's any kind of policy about where drivers park the truck so that it's visible to whoever they're attempting a delivery to? I'm glad you brought that up because another thing that uh, UPS advised me was, yes, they all have their vehicles. Now, because of the season, you know, the holidays and the large volume of packages, they do rent out equipment. They'll rent, you know, the various, uh, the truck rental companies. But all, t but every vehicle that they rent, they put a large 24-inch uh, placard on it. It says UPS and has their Department of Transportation number on it. Now, it's not something that's a, that's a giant sign. It's, you know, it's a placard about, about this big. It'll have UPS on it. So even then, they'll have their uniform person, and they'll have that, that whether it's a rider, U-Haul, whichever, whichever company it is, they'll have a placard on it as well. Because of the season, they do advise that, you know, they do sometimes rent out uh, trucks. But otherwise, they have their brown vehicles, and they're all fairly large, and they do tend to park in a prominent spot. And doesn't UPS typically, when they have you sign, sign on to, like, a digital, big digital device as opposed to... Yes, that is a normally, they also, that is, I would say most of the time that's correct. It's not unknown of them having a signature for one reason or another, but pretty much they're all going to, to, to digital. So they just have a clipboard against another thing to be suspicious about. Is the, uh, is the uh, uh, view from this house out to the street, is that obstructed in, in some way where that, that they were more vulnerable if you're aware of to not being able to look out the window and see a truck? Uh, no, again, like, unfortunately, they took advantage of the fact it was the Tuesday before Thanksgiving. It's the holidays. You know, the, the, the husband was at home reading to his children. They're just having a normal, we I mean, think about what we were all doing on the, during the holidays. Last Tuesday, I was more worried about if I'm going to you know, burn the turkey or not. I'm not worried about, you know, was the UPS going to come and suddenly I have four guys with guns in my face. That's the last thing you're thinking about. Well, we heard something similar to this may have happened in Chicago. Uh, have you guys, I don't know, been talking to other police departments across the country or during normal crime analysis search, you know, we do look for crime pattern, things of that nature. There's nothing at this time to indicate there's anything out of state in that regards, but as far as any kind of connection, we look at everything as best we can. And what were the man's injuries? Uh, he had severe lacerations to, to his skull. He had, had several skull fractures. They were not, uh, he lost several teeth. I mean, and there was concern for a while about bleeding to the brain, but fortunately, again, this was, these were very severe injuries. He survived by, by the grace of God. And for that, we're grateful for. But with that said, uh, I mean, the man's a Texan. He, I mean, we could all be proud of that. This is a sad, this is a sad situation. But that man stood at that door and gave his, gave his family a chance to, to protect themselves and hide. And, and that also saved him because they were able to call the police. Was there any questions that they were yelling at him that uh, you have in your report, uh, like uh, where is this or where is that or uh, where is your money? Or? Nothing specific this time that we were able to discuss. Sergeant Tony Mora, M-O-R-A. Okay, guys, thank you very much.